Hello, welcome back to another Models by Me. This time, because I've alluded to it, we'll be unboxing Airfix's Vintage Classic, the Brewster Buffalo in 176 scale. We will do this in the usual manner of, well, we'll start with the history section of the actual plane itself, followed by having a look at the outside of the box, then the contents, then the instructions, then the sprues, and then my final thoughts at the end. During the interwar periods, many nations were replacing their biplanes with monoplane fighters. The Buffalo was Brewster's answer for the US Navy's request to replace the aging Grumman F3F, having won the competition over Grumman's answer, the F4F. Yep, the Buffalo won against the Wildcat. However, against the Japanese naval fighter, the infamous Zero, the Buffalo was no match, being completely outclassed in performance and armament. In December 1941, the British and Dutch were using the Buffalo in Southeast Asia, attempt, uh, attempted to give its pilots an edge against both the Zero and the Japanese Army fighter, the Key 43 Oscar, by reducing the amount of fuel, equipment, ammo, even to the extent of giving it lighter machine guns. However, despite taking out all of this, it made little difference to the performance of the Buffalo. Only when the Dutch halved the amount of fuel and ammo in the wings did the Buffaloes and the Dutch equipped Hurricane Squadrons were able to match the Oscars in the turn. Back to the US, during the operation in Midway, the Buffalo acquired the unfortunate nickname of the Flying Coffin. A previous Previous report in 1940 from an American reporter in the UK reported that the Buffalo cannot compete against existing English or German fighters. Even the American Eagle Squadron pilots preferred the Hurricane over the Buffalo. Despite all this, the Finnish actually quite liked it, as it was quite an easy plane to fly. With one of their aces commenting, it's like a gentleman's touring plane. Finnish mechanics also solved an issue with the engine that plagued the Buffalo's other users, improving its reliability. In the end, the Brewster Buffalo earned a reputation in the Finnish Air Force as one of its most successful fighters with a kill to loss ratio of 33 to 1. Over to the kit, this is quite an old kit. It was first released back in 1972 and has been re-released several times over the years. So let's see how well, or not how well detailed, this kit will be. If you made it this far, please consider hitting that subscribe button and we'll take a look at the outside of the box. So the whoops. So the outside of the box. So we got nice classic Roy Cross artwork of a Brewster Buffalo trying. Steady camera, steady. Of the Brewster Buffalo trying to fight off what appears to be a Japanese Zero hiding there. Trying to fight off at least because there is some damage on the tail here. So, classic, classic box art to give you that inspiration while painting this thing. Down the side is the boring bits of warning. Not suitable for children under 36 months old in various different languages. It is owned by Hornby. Booster Buffalo, barcode if you want to scan it. Cartograph decals, so they're going to be quite good. UKCA. 
Recommended years 8 and above, free cycle, and not free sad onions included. Or not free sad onions not included. This side, we've got Brewster Buffalo again, the fun box art. But the camera's so low, if I put it stood it up right, it'd be like up close here, so... Hold on. That's a bit better. 170 second. Down this side. Oh, by the way, that's the same as that side. Down this side, we have FX Vintage Classics, Rooster Buffalo, and a brief about the plane and the kit itself. So we now know it's a 1972 kit. The two artworks, or the two schemes in this kit, include an American pre war, okay, early wars, 1941, and a RAF. In Burma for early 42. Paints that recommended paints that are not included. One flying hour and skill level one. What should be my skill? Uh, my skill levels at the end will be a uh, probably two. Being a vintage kit, I would probably agree with that. The underside, absolutely nothing. Content, so... I've also just noticed Roy Cross actually signed it in the corner there. <laughs> right, let's open him up. We have a baggie with all the old classic sprues in there. Classic. We have... The instructions. And then we have the decals. Let's have a look at the decals. Which are very nice. They're very cramped. There's not a lot of space on here. So be careful if you're using scissors. Might almost recommend a knife almost if you're... Um, Cutting these ones out. Wow. All, all in all, very, very nice. Uh, oh, I can definitely read no push on these smaller ones. Just, to, just for comparison. This is about an eighth of an inch, eighth of an inch wide, and that is smaller than that. So. Just to show you how detailed that is. Engine release? I can definitely spot read release there. Enclosure release? Not sure on that one. Life raft? Yes, it's a Navy aircraft, so life raft be highly appreciative. And... Oh, radio battery. I was about to say, why would he have a sandy battery? No, no, it's a radio battery. Oh, I'm not even going to attempt those ones. But all in all, considering, I say, that is an eighth of an inch, which is about three millimeters, three, four millimeters. Yeah, that goes to show you the scale of this thing. Ooh, what's these on the end? Oh. Do not push, hit, no push, and lift here. Okay, nice and easy. Okay. Let's have a look at the next step. Which is, whoop, the next step is the instructions. Thank you, title card, for telling us that already. So, brief history about the buffalo again. Pause if you want to read that. Hang on a minute. Yeah, that's what I'm used to seeing. So, assembly instructions, study drawings, uh, parts together, carefully scraped paint from the glue surfaces. So basically, if you're gluing these two sides together and you put paint here on this particular edge, take it off so it can actually stick together. 
the glue melts the plastic together, not the paint. To apply decals, dip in warm water for a few seconds, anywhere up to a minute, it's depending on how warm the water is. Slide off the back in it back slide off backing into position using conjunction conjunction with box art. Okay. Not appropriate for children under 36 months old. So if you're making the American version, and I have to use the box art. Hmm, okay. So down here we've got the stage, glue, don't glue, symmetrical assembly. Doubt it's even included. Alternate parts, okay, landing gear up or down normally. Repeat this operation. Multiple engines or multiple bombs? Don't think we'll be seeing this on this one. Decals are in a white box. Crystal, as in clear plastic. In a black circle. Wait, yes, some planes will cry, wait. This is not one of them. Remove by file, drill, cut. Humber paint number is the actual number. So we'll see that up here. So to paint the pilot's feet, yeah, as a pilot, we can do the Jelly Baby test. So to paint the pilot's feet, use Humbro 33, for example. So first off, glue the pilot into the seat, into the cockpit tub. Before you do the, well, I'm calling it a tub, the base plate. Before you do that bit, glue the bottom canopy glass window. It was supposed to be aircraft carrier use, so probably quite handy for that bit. The landing. Are you still recording? You're still recording. Good. To glue that in there, you use PVA. Glue the wings, upper wings onto the lower wings, and glue the cockpit base plate in there as well. Paint it in all the interior in Humbro 226, which is a weird greeny colour. Next step. If We'll come back to you in a minute. Right, so what do we do here first? Well, first off, let's paint. So paint the interior first. And glue the arrestor hook in there, so... It looks like it can be retracted all the way in. Or, if you're posing it as landing gear down and a rest of hook down, you pull them out. So, okay. I would probably recommend gluing it, though I'm sure some of the um, older generation knows that that could probably just sit in there and slide backwards and forwards with no hassle. Glue the two sides of the fuselage together now that your rest of hook's in. Glue what I can only assume is a fuel tank. It probably isn't, but I'm assuming that is the fuel tank, or at least one of them, into the cockpit section. Yes, fuel tank in the cockpit, actually physically in the cockpit section. Yikes, okay. And then glue the horizontal stabilizers on the end. Optional bit, if you're doing the American version, the American one, which is stage B, option B, I know that, that's a gun sight. That's basically a scope to aim, your tar aim down at your targets. Uh, how effective that could be? Pass. So if you... Because of that, you also have two different front parts of the canopy. So, if you're doing REF or US version, option A and B there, glue them on, and glue the upper part of the canopy on. Also gluing the fuselage to the wings. Stage four. So we've got the aerial to glue on the front, Leave till last because you will knock it off while painting. And then we have this weird construction. So <laughs> what shall we do here first? So we got the option of spinny propeller. 
we have spinner. So, okay. Paint up the engine, the interior, the uh, cow, cow, uh, cowling. Glue these three together, so the two sides of the cowling onto the engine. So potentially, no, it doesn't even say that. Glue the two sides of the cowling onto the fuselage. While that's still fairly wet and not solidified, you will need to glue spinner onto propeller. Do not glue propeller to these two bits. Push the propeller through the front part of the cowling, through the engine block, and then glue onto this little nub on the end if you want spinny propeller. If you do not fancy spinny propeller or do not care for spinny propeller, glue that to that. Don't glue that to that because it doesn't touch that. Push that to that, then glue to that. And then put all this <laughs> into the front of the plane. The last stage. So, landing gear down, put the put the landing gear struts together, so we've got you onto here, and then the wheel onto the end of the strut, and then the cover for the wheel onto the end of that as well. And then part of the cover onto the strut. Note, it shows the landing gear down only. Just to prove it, that's the rest of the instructions. I will insert a snippet of the very original instructions back from 72, if I recall, which shows how to put the landing gear in the upright position. It was only in the 1972 release of the kit, because I then clicked on the very next one in scale mates, downloaded the instructions, and they were gone. And every subsequent version told you landing gear down only. Despite the parts are still they're still here. They're still on the sprue. We'll find those later. <laughs> Mini rant to one side. You can do landing gear up as per the snippet of the instructions I just put up. Option A or B, depending again, American or US versions for the tail wheel. Right, let's have a look at the paint guide. So. RUF version in very typical RUF colours. So yellow, dark earth, dark green, black, gunmetal, and sky, or map beige as they've called it here. Pretty decent, let's have a look just to make sure everything lines up semi well. Kind of the wings. Are... When you're going to have the wings in the way like this, can we just have a, like, a side view? Only it's like the front part here without the wings in the way. Just make things a little bit easier. But, mm, I might change my mind when I come to try and paint this. With the exception I'm not doing this version. Spoilers! But yes, the um, airfix have a tendency to tell you, here we go, that the green here starts halfway up the cowling before going basically halfway down, almost to the ring here. Just about make our ring there. Before, yeah, basically about there. So if you look here, it tells you that it starts all the way down here, before ending up at the, just finishing at the port machine gun. If it stopped doing this, especially when you can see the machine gun there, and there's no green. Make your instructions line up. But other than that, pretty standard. So, US version. Those that know the early war American planes, this will come as no surprise. But those that aren't aware, ah, they did not care about camouflage, did they? So, slightly dark yellow wings, bright yellow tail surface. Which I think was, don't quote me, but I think that was identification for which carrier or squadron you're supposed to be. I can say I could be wrong on that. Identification codes all on a silver aeroplane. 
when they entered wartime, they quickly got rid of this scheme and went straight into, well, when the Americans entered the war, they quickly got rid of this scheme and went for camouflage before reverting back to silver near the end of the war because they just there was no need to camouflage the planes anymore. Thinking P-51s, P-47s, for example. Anyway, get back on subject. Quite an interesting color scheme. So you've got blue nose you have to paint, blue propellers you got to paint, blue tail band, which is a decal, just paint it, it'll make things much easier. Ring stripes, this is going to be a really interesting plane. Stand out more on the shelves than most of the other things I've got at the moment. So, yeah, quite an interesting scheme that one. Right, one last thing left to go. Yep, yeah, it's sprue time! Oop. Yep, it's sprue time, so let's have a look what we got. There we go, so let's start with the fuselage. The whole piece of it. Right, so the outside. There we go. So we got raised, there is raised panel lines. There's also quite a lot of rivets. Raised, yeah, raised rivets, which is what I would expect. They're very shallow raised rivets, so quite nice, quite nice. Yeah, very nice. Interior detail, as to be expected, non-existent. I'll come back to you later. Lower wing section again. So we got raised panel lines here, and then raised rivets right next to it. That's a panel line there. That's rivets. So. Mm, there you go, there you go, there you go, you can see the panel lines now. So, yeah, really nice interior. What interior? Might be seeing a trend here. Upper wings. Which are very nice, we've got Metal and fabric covered surfaces. The fabric looks actually quite nice. Our razor and fairly shallow on these ray sections here. That's up the outside. So nice rivet lines again. And access panels which are very nice. We have quite clear um Bolt screws, oh, big rivets holding them down. Then be rivets if they're access panels, but you know what I mean. Overall, quite nice and whoop. <laughs> Haven't seen that for a long time. So far, also they've done the right thing. All these ejection pin pin marks in places where you ain't gonna see them. Right. See? Two lots of landing gear and covers. FX, just give us the instructions on how to put the landing gear back in in the upright position. Uh, engine cowling quite nice. The outer cowlings. A little bit misleading as it definitely showed there was a machine gun out here and yet yeah, there's no sign in fact the mach they showed the machine gun sticking out the top like up here somewhere which would be on the cowlings here instead they shoot out the front here hmm. those are just covered up so yeah nothing there and it's just the big hole in the middle Propeller, yeah, quite nice, but quite basic propeller. 
Spinner is, well, a big spinner at the end of it. Landing gear struts are for what they can be. Fairly nicely detailed, but... Yeah, we've got ejection pin marks here, but again, you, so you need to file these down. Not these bits on the side here, because those are the pegs that glue into these holes. But there is ejection pin marks slap bang in between those two pegs, so be careful filing away. On all the landing gear struts, and okay. Ah, oh, you let me down, AFX. Right, the seat is. It's a seat, there's nothing else to it. Quite literally, there's no detail on it at all. So, the detail on the. Don't get out of focus after I just got you in focus. On the tailplane here, the horizontal stabilizers. Very nice again. Stretch and aerial. Oh no, that's the rest of hook. Quite nice. Wheels are very basic. Engine. Uh, from what you can see, not too bad but not that well detailed i have seen nicer sorry fx but there's definitely been nicer i think that's the gun sight come back to you the supposed fuel tank could be a water tank or oil tank that one back to the other side of the fuselage we have nothing on the inside cockpits Ooh. why are you jackson pin marks here why we see this bit Roll them away, but hmm. okay, no detail whatsoever on the interior. Two landing gears, and yeah, so the bit where the arrestor hook goes in. Okie dokie. All right, let's have a look at the jelly baby. Ooh. I stand corrected. Jelly Baby, you are not. That is quite nice detail. Let me swap hands. So you can see the life jacket here. You can make out his goggles on the top. Flight boots. Gloves. Really, really nice. Jelly Baby, you are not. Right, clear plastic that happens to be in its own separate baggie. So, hang on. Right, clear plastic. I'm going to ignore this mess because it does look clear, but once you start painting that up, have fun painting that up. But yeah, there's good luck with that. But um, well, I've only got to compare to the rivet, so along the flat bit of plastic here. This bit's nice and flat. Very clear, very clear. You can see straight through that. The top, where it curves. Then we get a bit of refraction and a bit of dis disorientation. Right, so okay, not disorientation. Refraction is correct. At the back here. Not too bad. Through the front of the canopy. Oop, I've lost everything. Ew. Hmm. Okay, so the canop the clear plastic they used is mostly clear, even on the front ones. Just a shame there's no point in having the clear plastic because there's nothing on the inside. There's nothing there. Uh, okay, let me bag this up and then we get on to my final thoughts. So 
So, my final thoughts on this kit. It's, well, it's a 1972 kit, so we do have to bear that in mind. So let's go through this, what I think the skill level of this should be. So one is beginner. Two being nice and easy, like a Spitfire for example, keeping with Airfix. Skill level three is that intermediate, so you need to have a few modules under your belt before you take on a, say, skill level three model. Those I would say are bombers or multi-engine planes, so Blenheim, Wellington, Probably not a Wellington, that's a poor example, because that's quite a nice kit, that one. But let's say the Blenheim, for example. I would say that's a skill level 3. For um, advanced, this is also where resin and photo etched, starts, photo etched parts start to appear. So you need quite a lot of skill and some advanced modelling skills to take on those planes. If I've been a like a master builder, you've got a lot of skill under your plane, under your plane, under your belt. I would potentially say a vac because I've never given this before as an example, but I would say a vac formed kit would be skill level five. I have only had one dealing with vac vacuum forming, and that was a canopy. Never again, if I can help it. This. It's a skill level two. It's an easy, easy kit to put together. Saying that, do take your time, but it's it is nicely laid out. So you do have to make your decision early if you're doing REF or US versions. Though saying that, you leave the canopy off till last. Leave the tail wheel off till last, and there's no difference between the two kits. Little two versions. But still, even that. Let's say skill level 2. Probably the most complicated thing is remember to put the arrestor hook in and the engine at the front. That's it really. So a nice, nice, easy kit to get people in. Interior detail. Oh dear. No, to keep things fair, I do not. If they do include a pilot, I do not count the pilot because not all kits include pilots, so it's not fair. Uh, it has a seat. It has f a floor. I'm stretching to think of anything else. Oh, it has a gun sight if it's an American version. Interior detail one. Interesting, there's no oil fuel tank thingy back there in the artwork. <laughs> I suppose that comes back to like the REF trying to lighten these planes up as much as possible. Interior, yeah, interior detail is going to be a one. There's nothing there. Exterior detail. The rivet lines are very nice. Panel lines, they're, they're raised. Where they are, they are raised. So, mm, okay. Again, product of its time. Raised panel lines were a thing back then. Not so much now. Control surfaces being fabric and being well represented, represented as fabrics controlled surfaces there. Or covered surfaces. Those are quite nice. I, but the wheels are bland. Let's move, there's no tread or anything on them. I'm gonna have to give this, I think three and a half. That's a, bit, that's a generous three and a half. The rivet lines are nice. The fabric control services are nice, but there's not much else going for it. Again, so we got a total score, three and a half plus one, four and a half. I'm trying to do the maps and yeah, you'll have it up on your screen. 
So four and a half for a 1972 kit. Not too bad. Not too bad. For what would be a very pleasant little kit to make. It would be quite quick to quick or long to paint, depending on which version you're doing by the looks of things. And we'll just make a nice collection on anybody's shelves. So, if you like the video, please hit that like button. Comment below, have you made one of these? Is there anything to, any traps to watch out for? Is it really a, just a straightforward plane as suggested? And does the um, arrestor hook, do, does it actually do go in and out? And hit that subscribe button for more videos. Uh, please hit share with your friends as well. I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.